Normally, I know whether or not I like a car and whether I should recommend it to you, but with the Hyundai i30, I'm just not quite so sure. You see, the i30 is handsome, well-built, well-equipped and comes with Hyundai's excellent five-year unlimited mileage warranty. But while previous generations of the i30 have offered value for money in addition to those qualities, the latest one has moved up market, meaning it's playing with the big boys. And I'm not sure if it's ready for the promotion or not. I'm no wiser up front here either. It is very conservative. I mean, it is just a relentless vista of black plastic. It is everywhere. Black up here, black down there, black on the doors. Now, you could say the same about the VW Golf, but at least that car has had an opportunity to establish itself as a credible premium car. This still feels just a little bit as though it's lacking the wow factor. It is decently well made though, there's lots of soft touch plastic across the top of the dash and the leather steering wheel on this particular car feels really good. The leather seats also are very comfortable and there's lots of storage in here. There's a big central cubby here, we've got a wireless charging pad as well and your USB and aux in. We've got a couple of cup holders, another little place to store some other oddments. Under here there's a 12 volt socket and the glove box is large enough for a packet of crisps and the door bins pass the car buyer big bottle test. Our car is a top spec premium SE model so comes with leather seats, a panoramic sunroof and a heated steering wheel. One step below is premium with part leather, part cloth seats, an electric parking brake and LED lights, while below that is SE nav which is our pick. Partly as this is where the nice 8 inch touchscreen you can see here becomes standard, an SE and SE trim sit at the bottom of the range but even these are pretty well equipped. Here in the back and things are pretty average really. Now I'm just over 5 foot 10 and I've got a decent amount of knee room and headroom is just about okay even with this panoramic sunroof but I do think if you are over 6 foot you're really going to struggle for space back here. You also sit very bolt upright. The seats are very comfortable but you do feel as though you are sitting very upright and very uncomfortably. Having said that, there is space for three people back here just thanks to a almost flat floor. You can carry a third passenger. I mean, they will be struggling for shoulder space and this seat here isn't particularly comfortable, but for short journeys, it will be absolutely fine. Now, these doors open nice and wide, which is great when you're loading those child seats in. And another bonus are the isofix points that are really easily reachable. There's an armrest here with a couple of cup holders and we've even got a little hatch here for your skis, which is quite a nice touch. Things are pretty good around the boot though. At 395 litres, there's more space than the Vauxhall Astra and the VW Golf and it's a good shape as well, nice and square. Now, if I grab the car by a large suitcase, you can see there is plenty of room back here. There's also little cubbies down at the sides and under here there is a place for the space saver spare wheel which is quite a nice feature. But the thing I like most about this car is the fact that when you fold down the 60-40 folding rear seats you get an almost flat loading area and that is pretty good for this type of hatchback car. There are two petrol engines available with the i30, both turbocharged. The entry level is a 118 bhp 1 litre 3 cylinder affair, while the one we've got here is the 1.4, which produces 138 bhp. There's also a 1.6 litre diesel, which is punchy enough and seriously economical. 0 to 62 miles an hour takes about 11 seconds for the 1 litre petrol and the diesel, and 8.9 for the 1.4 petrol. This is the 1.4 petrol, and for the time being, it's the most powerful engine you can have in an i30 before the end models arrive. So, what have we got? Well, it's 138 brake horsepower, and for the most part, it's a very smooth and quiet engine. That's the good stuff. The bad stuff is that there is a huge amount of turbo lag with this engine. You really have to rev the nuts off this thing to actually make any progress. It's a bit of a shame really because, like I say, it's a nice quiet engine. In terms of fuel economy, well, we're getting around the 40s. And so with that in mind and the fact that the acceleration is very lethargic, I would stick with the 1 litre 3 cylinder if I were you. 
If fuel economy is a priority, the diesel manages a genuinely impressive 74 mpg. Repair bills should be minimal too, thanks to Hyundai's five-year unlimited mileage warranty. Now we come on to the driving experience, and it's very much a case of good things and bad things. Let's start off with the bad. Well, to drive, the i30 feels so numb, so soggy. The steering is totally devoid of feel. I've got no idea what the front wheels are doing because there's no feedback through the steering wheel. The gear lever is, well, we've got this six-speed manual here and it is very notchy. But the worst thing are the pedals. The brake pedal feels very spongy, very mushy. And the clutch, I can't feel the biting point in it. So whenever I'm at a junction, I'm trying to pull away, it's very easy to actually stall this car, which can be very embarrassing. Another bad thing about this car is this particular version has got the large alloy wheels and around town the ride is pretty chronic. It bangs and crashes into all sorts of potholes and it really will shake your fillings out. That's the bad stuff. The good stuff is, well, underneath all of the mushy controls the i30 actually handles very well. which. Is doubly disappointing really because if they'd only given it some decent feedback through the steering and decent pedals this could be almost as good as a Seat Leon and a Mazda 3 and definitely on par with a VW Golf. And whilst the ride is pretty bad around town on the move it smooths out very nicely so on the motorway it rides very smoothly. Speaking of the motorway this car this 1.4 is so hushed and quiet on the motorway is almost eerie. This is easily on par with the VW Golf. In actual fact, it's, I think at 70 miles an hour, this is better for in-car refinement than the Golf, and that is some um, high praise indeed. The i30 also deserves serious praise when it comes to safety kit. As standard, you get auto-dipping headlights, autonomous emergency braking, and lane-keeping assistance. Those are big car premium safety systems, and they come as standard on a £17,000 hatchback. So, can I recommend the i30 despite its iffy steering and uncomfortable ride around town? Yes, I can. I mean, don't buy one if you love having fun on country roads, but if you're a long distance driver, the i30 will look out for you and take care of you. And it's hard to think of higher praise for a car than that. If you've enjoyed this video, check out our review of the Honda Civic and our hatchbacks playlist, and click the Car Buy logo to subscribe to our channel.